tiny shell. I need to hi Terry. I need to change my background. Hi Gail. Ooh, we've got people coming on. I look like I've got some strange rash. I haven't. I don't know why my face looks like that. I look like I've got measles or something on the camera. It's not it's not in real life, so don't worry, I haven't got like some <laughs> some strange lurgy thing. It's I uh, don't know why my face looks like that. Slightly worrying. So how are we all? Have we managed to keep up with day one? Just hang on, see if we get any others joining us. I'm sure we will shortly. Anybody wants to ask any questions in the meantime, feel free. It's a bit of a free for all. Gail's saying yes. Gail's managed to keep up. That was good. Well, why don't we crack on, hey? I think there's only a few of us on at the moment, but we'll get some more on shortly. So, don't know if many of you have had a chance to watch the bonus task yet. Uh, if you haven't, if you have a look in the announcements section when we've finished. So, on the in the Facebook group, if you look along the top, there's some tabs. If you click on the announcements tab, um, I mark all the videos that I do as announcements, in theory. Um, I try to so that they're easy to find so if you haven't seen the bonus task yet it was a, a live video that I did earlier in the day hi Enza uh, so just scroll down the group or look in the announcement section and you will see that um, and what I wanted to do today was um, we'll see if we get any questions I haven't seen any questions in the group yet in the Facebook group. Um, I know there's a bit of a time difference with the states, so quite possibly some people over the sea will post some questions later and then I'll answer them tomorrow. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today was a bit a bit more about goals. So that's the theme of our our day today. It's where we start in thinking into results, it's where we start with everything because if you're going to achieve anything in life you know remember this five day challenge is the science of success challenge there is a science behind it the very very first step to achieving anything because you know success means different things to different people but whatever it is that you are looking for you've got to be clear on what that is okay you are capable of so much more than you are already doing. And I know that to be true for every single one of you because I know it's true for me, I know it's true for everybody that I've worked with, I know it's true of humans in general. You know, there's there are loads and loads of estimates of how much of our potential we're actually using and they range from like 0.1% to 10%. Generally speaking, people in the know, you know, human potential experts, um, generally will say we're, we're using like between we're, we are fulfilling between three and ten percent of our potential that's ridiculous really when you think about it, when you think you know even if you just became ten percent more productive than you already are you'd like double your results you double your productivity you, you double um your achieved potential it's just it's crazy that most people never even address this most people never even think about it the vast majority of people on earth settle for what they've got they think that what they've been given is all they're ever going to have and they've just got to settle with it and make the most of it and and that's it and that it scares me a bit that because 
that's not what we're here for. You know, that's not what life is about. Life is about growth. Life is about creativity. It's about evolution. It's about advancement. It's not about just plodding on where you are, staying stuck with the same results you've got for the rest of your life, retiring and then dying. That's not what life is supposed to be about. It's about advancement. It's about growing. So this is why the tasks that I've set you for today um, are all about identifying your C-type goal. That thing, that life that you really want to have, that you really want to work towards, because nobody else is going to do it for you. Um, and if you don't get clear on what that life is, then what are the chances of you ever having it? I mean, it's just, it's just not going to happen, is it? Um, and, you know, we get, we get a lot of resistance to this idea because people are so used to setting smaller goals, setting goals that they think they can probably achieve. Um, and what happens is as we go through the process, you do come up with smaller goals within the big goal because obviously you've got to, you know, you've got to get there in steps. So you have got to kind of come up with these, um, uh, these sort of steps along the way that kind of become mini goals, but you've got to know where you are heading. Your subconscious mind cannot come up with the ideas and the thoughts that you need if it doesn't know where you're going. And I said this earlier, you know, just to have a goal of being happy or having lots of money or, you know, even, even being in a better relationship or, you know, those goals are really vague and your mind can't work with that. You've got to have a target to be aiming for. So it's so, so important that you let yourself imagine what that life is, what that life would be that you really, really want and you get clear on it. And you're probably not going to be able to do that in one day. You'll get a really good idea. And if you use that visualisation that I posted this morning, it will help you. But we are continually working on our goals. You know, we're continually refining them, continually getting the detail behind them and imagining all the little pieces that go to make up that C-type goal. So today is a start. Remember, it's a quick start challenge. And I want you to use the tools that I've given you and just let your mind wander. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. Don't worry about what you think is possible. Forget about the how just for today. If you want to see it as a game, see it as a game. The minute you start thinking about how am I going to do this, your paradigm is going to kick in. That little voice of doubt is going to kick in and say, well, there's no point. Even, this is ridiculous. There's no point even thinking about it because it's never going to happen. Forget that. Push that voice away and say, I'm just going to, just for today, I'm just going to play. I'm just going to imagine what my life would look like if I could have anything and be anything and do anything. That is what today is all about. And I said earlier that I was going to talk about the law of gestation tonight because uh, those of you who know me will know that I am big on the universal laws. It's what we teach, you know, um, there's a, an amazing book called Working with the Law by Raymond Hollowell. Uh, we actually have a programme called Working with the Law that, that Bob did with um, a lady called Mary Morrissey, but it's based on the book by Raymond Hollowell. And the laws of the universe underpin everything that we do, okay? Whether you believe them or not, they are a thing. Uh, you know, just like the laws of rel relativity, law of gravitation, all the, the laws of physics, uh, the laws of the universe are a thing. It's, if you want to look them up, look them up. Um, we use them to support what we're doing, to support our goal achievement. Uh, we'll be talking about the law of attraction later in the week. We're we'll talking about the law of vibration. They're fundamental laws in um, in what we teach. And, you know... In the science of success they are fundamental the, the law of vibration i would say is probably the the most important law um, and we will talk about that if you if you don't know what that is but the law of gestation um is the law that says everything takes a certain period of time to materialize okay to come to fruition or to grow so, uh, you know, a baby, we know a baby gestation period is 40 weeks. We know that it's from, from the seed 
being planted, if you like, takes 40 weeks to grow into a, a baby, generally speaking. Um, we know that if you plant a carrot seed in the ground here, it takes about 17 weeks, I think, to actually grow into a carrot. And the same thing, you know, the laws of physics, the laws of the universe, they all work the same way. They are all 100% present, 100% of the time, working all the time. And the law of gestation applies to your goal. If you imagine that idea that you've had, this, this thought that you've had, this seed of an idea that you've thought, hmm, maybe I could have this, or what would my life look like if I had what I wanted? That is a seed of an idea. And as soon as you start to nurture that, so you just start to accept it as an idea, as a viable idea, and you start to say, hmm, okay, well, this is what my family would look like, this is what my finances would look like, this is what my home would look like, and you start to play with it, and you start to become emotionally involved with it, which is why I've got you doing those exercises today, because becoming emotionally involved with that goal starts to move it into your subconscious mind now we're going to talk more about the subconscious mind tomorrow but basically your subconscious mind comes up with the ideas on how you're going to achieve it the law of gestation says that there has to be a certain period of time between that seed of idea being planted and it actually coming to fruition the problem is that we don't know how long that period is. So we know how long it is for a baby, we know how long it is for a carrot or a lettuce or whatever else we plant, an acorn. We don't know how long the period of gestation is for your idea. But what you have to understand is, if you become emotionally involved with that idea, if you become so attached to that idea that you are determined that you're going to make it happen, and you concentrate every day on focusing on making it happen and you know and forgetting everything else and you know don't come at me with the oh but my family my family this my family that my family is so important of course family are the most important thing to you the family is the most important thing to most of us all of us but this goal has got to have at least equal priority and if you give it equal priority and you give it time and energy and focus continually and you are persistent with it, it has to come into form. It has to. It's the law. That's what happens. Because if you focus your energy and your thoughts and your ideas on how you're going to achieve that goal, it will happen. Most people give up. Most people... Uh, want to know the period of gestation, they want to know how long it's going to take, we can't tell them, um, and they get frustrated, and they think nothing's happening, and they give up, but um, I don't know if you have seen, um, not seen, if you have read the book uh, You Squared by Price Pritchett, Price, it's a really good book, You Squared, it's you with a little two, you know, squared sign, math sign, um, Price Pritchett said, evidence, uh, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. So absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Just because you can't see that something's working, just because you can't see that something's um, forming, just because it feels like you've been banging away at the same thing for ages and it's not working, it doesn't mean it's not working in the background because you can't see it working. It just means that it hasn't yet come to the end of its gestational period. And most people give up too soon. Most people get frustrated. They feel like they've gone on long enough and they should have seen results by now. And they just stop. And most people stop short. And if they just kept going, they would have eventually got there. We see it all the time. And we see what happens when people persist and when people keep going and you know stick with that goal stay focused on the goal don't veer off onto something else don't change the goal don't um just give up when people keep going and keep going they do achieve the goal so this law of gestation this gestational period 
is really important to understand. You know, if um, if you're pregnant or your partner was pregnant, um, you know, you wouldn't get to like, you wouldn't get to 18 weeks and go, oh, for God's sake, God, when this, this baby's not coming, right, forget it. This baby's not coming, let's just cancel it. You wouldn't do that because you know to expect it to be 40 weeks or around about 40 weeks. But because we don't know how long the gestational period of this goal is going to be, people give up. And I don't want you to give up. I want you to get so obsessed with this goal that you're going to take it, become involved with it, visualise it every day, think about it every spare moment you've got, you know, work out the action steps that you need to take. To, and they will come. You know, if you actually give this airtime, if you actually give that C-type goal, if you allow it, to germinate and you allow it to you know you, you start to mull it over in your mind and you start to think maybe it would be possible the more you do that the more you start to believe that it will be possible and the more you start to have the ideas that you need and attract the things that you need to attract so that was what i wanted to say about the law of gestation so um does anybody have any questions they want to ask about today's tasks or about the laws or about anything to do with what we do you know you you really I, I want to encourage you to use these sessions because you've got me for five days um most people have to pay for that so you know you've got me for free for five days so i know that we get a lot of people in these challenges who have been using the law of attraction for a long time or you know been following bob for a long time or trying to get results for a long time um use this opportunity to ask questions and get feedback and you know uh, get whatever it is that you need this week for free because it's a really good opportunity to do that while I'm waiting as well I'll just say I've seen some comments in the group from people who you know I speak to quite I speak to a lot of people all the time with what I do and when I ask them what they want quite often a, a lot of people will say I just want to be happy and grateful for what I've got I just want to be happy with what I've got and you should be happy and grateful for what you've got but you should never be satisfied with what you've got and if you're not happy that's usually the sign that you that that spirit inside you that the real you that life force that's inside you that's wanting greater expansion and fuller expression it's it's trying to get out it's trying to get you to do something that you're not doing yet and that's where this feeling of sort of dissatisfaction comes from it's where this feeling of um something's just not quite right you know i don't feel like i'm doing what i should be doing that that feeling is the real you that life force within you trying to get out trying to express itself and Understanding what that C-type goal is, you know, seeing that, doing the visualisation, letting the imagination wander, that is how we help people find out what they're supposed to be doing because you wouldn't be having those thoughts. Your imagination wouldn't bring those things up if you weren't supposed to be doing them. So, um, you know, people saying, I just want to be happy with what I've got. If you're not happy with what you've got, there's a reason for that it's because you're supposed to be doing something else okay so actually you're settling for what you've got or, or you're asking me to help you settle for what you've got and i can't help you do that 
um, you know, it's the, the whole point of the challenge is the science of success. So I'm assuming that you joined the challenge because you want to advance in some way, you want to change your results, you want to improve your income, improve your health, improve your relationships, whatever it might be. Um, and I'm here to help you do that. So part of this, you know, it can be quite an emotional process really, but, but the, a big part of this is getting to grips with what that is, getting to grips with what it is that you actually want your life to look like. Okay, not focusing what you've got now, but focusing on getting clear on what it is that you really want. Just hang on, see if we get any more any questions coming in. Oh, just getting messages left, right and centre about staying at home. Staying at home, do not come to doctor's practice, um, do not come to school. I know it's the same all over, uh, but it's going a bit mad here. <laughs> Sorry. And you know, this is such an important time to be focusing on things like this because it would be really easy to lose a few months of your life, you know, as in just kind of stagnate. People do this all the time when something like this comes up, you know, it happened in the economic crisis, like 2008, 2009. Um, it happens when there's all kinds of things go on in the world. Some people just kind of go, right, oh, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait and see what happens for a few months. And that's like, you know, that's months out of your life. It's just totally wasted. Waiting to see what happens with something you can't control. And your future is something that you absolutely can control. So what a perfect time, especially if you are in a place where you're having to work from home or you, you're having to self-isolate or, or whatever. If you've got time, extra time, which a lot of people have at the moment, this is the perfect thing to be doing. Asking yourself, what exactly do I want my life to look like? What do I want to be doing? What would make me really happy? You know, what do I want, where do I want to be 12 months from now? Five years from now, what do I want to be doing? This is the perfect time to be thinking that. Don't just let fear anxiety doubt don't let it cloud your mind you be thinking about what you want to do going forward how how can you make your life the life you want it to be and not the life that somebody else has decided for you which is what most people are on the path to and we'll talk about that again tomorrow I'll hang on another few minutes, see if anybody's got any questions. In fact, I'll just have a look in the group and make sure I haven't missed any posts that people have put in. Ooh. I think the comments, oh, my comments aren't. Comments weren't scrolling, I've missed loads of people. Hi, Trish. <laughs> I'm looking well, aren't you? Yeah, I've got makeup on today, Trish. <laughs> I thought I'd treat you all. Uh, who else have we got? No, you haven't missed much, Nikki. <laughs> you can watch the replay. Aha, here we go. I can see some question now. How can I stay focused even with trying hard and doing... How can I stay focused even with trying hard and doing... I can't seem to move on to the next level and then I go back to what I know. Uh -huh. Yes, well, Enza, this is, this is exactly the problem because most people stay stuck where they are. Um, I'm not sure what the first question is, um, but I can read I can't seem to move on to the next level and then I go back to what I know. There's a few things. Firstly, there's your paradigm. So, as I say, we'll talk about the paradigm tomorrow, but basically you have, in your subconscious mind, you have a little operating system. 
okay and that operating system is made up of everything that you've absorbed over the years so all the beliefs all the things you were told when you were young the self-image that you've got of yourself um, the habits that you've developed all of that sits in a little operating system that we call your paradigm okay and it controls everything it controls the way you walk the way you talk the way you greet people the kind of thoughts you have the kind of ideas you have the beliefs you have um which side of the bed you get out of on a morning um what the first thing you do is when you get up it just just controls everything and what happens is people try to change their behavior so people try to change their results by changing their habits by changing their actions by forcing themselves to change but if you don't change that paradigm if you don't change that little operating system the way that you actually work it snaps back to what you were doing before so it's like imagine um people who are trying to lose weight i'm sure there's lots of people on here who at some point have tried to lose weight and you are in a particular your operating system works a particular way your paradigm is set to work a particular way to eat certain things at certain times to drink certain things um you know it, it's um, it's programmed to work a certain way and if you try to just change those habits by force and you say right from tomorrow i'm just going to drink raw juices um twice a day and then eat a healthy meal on the night time and i'm going to go to the gym three times a week okay if you just decide to do that the chances of it of you sticking with it are very slim you might do it for a few days you might even manage a couple of weeks but eventually that operating system that's used to work in a certain way goes hang on a minute this is a new thing i don't recognize this this isn't how we're programmed to act let's let's go back to what we we're doing before and it it is a, it's a, that's what happens your paradigm snaps you back to the habitual behavior that it's used to and as i say don't want to go into too much detail about it now because we're going to talk about it tomorrow but that is exactly what happens and that's why so many people get stuck it happens in every single area of life Whenever you try to change your results around anything, your paradigm, your little operating system that you've got that's built up over the years, eventually drags you back to your old way. So you've got to change the operating system first. And that is what we do. We reprogram that subconscious operating system so that it's working in a way that's going to move you towards your goals and it's not fighting against them. So, um, so basically tune in tomorrow <laughs> and we're talking about paradigm um but the first the first step has got to be getting really clear on what it is that you want on what it is that you're working towards because if you don't have that you can't change that operating system you can't plug in the new target you can't plug in the new goal if you don't know what that goal is so staying on task or today with goals um, that is what I would suggest you do today and then come back tomorrow and we'll talk about paradigms if you come back on the live tomorrow but that goal make that your aim for today getting crystal clear on what it is you actually want to achieve uh, Lynn I don't always feel emotionally attached to my goals and think that's why I haven't achieved them how can I get that feeling or is is it that I don't really want those goals well that's a question <laughs> that's a question you've got to answer really lynn and um, if you do the tasks from today i don't know if you've seen the bonus task from today that usually helps people to get that feeling but what i would say is when we have people who are struggling to get emotionally attached to their goal you're going to hear me talk a lot about repetition repetition is so so important in what we do so just visualizing your goal once and saying yeah i'm clear on that now isn't gonna cut it you have got to become obsessed with that goal you have got to be visualizing that goal multiple times a day that's what we do i take time out of my day three to five times a day to visualize my goal we also have uh, goal cards so our 
thinking to results members have goal power. This is one. Oh, wrong uh, so it has my goal and a date on it and we write it out as though we've already achieved it. So I'm so happy and grateful now that and we write the goal that we want to achieve on it with a date and we carry that around with us and that helps us visualise during the day yeah, because you don't have to sit um, you don't have to sit for five or ten minutes with your eyes closed and relaxing music on to visualise. You get to a point eventually where you've done it so often that all you need to do is feel the gold card in your pocket or in your bag or, or whatever and your subconscious mind will momentarily flick to a, like a screenshot of that visualisation and it just brings you back on task. So goal cards are a good a good idea but this is why it, working on your c-type goal is so important and it's just not a quick thing you know you have got to i mean you've got to ask yourself is it the right goal lynn quite quite often if you're not getting emotionally attached to it it's not big enough so i would probably be asking you if you're one of my clients are probably asking you okay that, that goal that you've set for yourself, say you'd achieved that and you'd done all that, what's the next level goal? What would you be going for after that? Because you want something that when you when you visualise it, when you think about having achieved it, you think, oh my God, that's just, you know, I, I just feel like my life was worthwhile. I could, I could die knowing that I'd done everything that I could to move myself towards that goal that's that's what you want you want to be um you know it, it wants to be something that you feel in the pit of your stomach that makes you feel a little bit sick i always think you know my c-type goal makes me feel a little bit sick and it's it's partly nerves it's partly excitement it's partly frustration that i haven't done it yet it's like that's what creates that sort of burning desire inside um so and don't get me wrong i mean thinking to results is a six month program and you know at, at the moment we are five months four or five months into our last intake and some people are still refining that goal some people will still say just not i still don't really know if this is the c type goal i'm supposed to be working towards so it can be a long process for people and, and i'm refining mine all the time i'm always refining it refining it refining it tweaking it a little bit um getting really clear on the different elements that are going to make it up so it's it isn't a quick thing but i would say ask yourself is it big enough if you're struggling to get emotionally involved with it is it big enough um, and make sure you do the tasks from today lynn but you know it's something that and it's a little bit diff i can't actually can't give you any advice i don't know what the c type goal is um and i don't know enough about you to be able to make other suggestions so you know in the one-to-one -one calls that we have with people sometimes i mean there's tears in all sorts <laughs> we have because people suddenly realize oh my god this is this this is what i'm supposed to be doing so sometimes we have to go a bit deeper than than the free challenge um but for now i would say you need to be asking yourself is that c type goal big enough Dan, I'm self-employed handyman, just getting back to work, been out five months from major back surgery, finding it difficult to drum up business, this is my main goal at the moment. What I would say, Dan, is I understand that I, I totally know what it's like when you are just living paycheck to paycheck and you're just wondering where the next dollar's coming from um the problem is if you focus on that if you focus on just getting the next hundred dollars getting the next fifty dollars getting the next just being able to pay this bill to be able to pay that bill you never move yourself forward you're going to stay stuck just just about getting by and you probably find that that money will come you probably find that you will you'll be able to pay those bills but you never actually get any more you never actually get past the paycheck to paycheck thing and this is why we help people get clear on the c-type goal the 
I know that it sounds a bit unrealistic probably when you are at a point where you're just kind of bimbling along just trying to make ends meet but I would encourage you to do this work. I would encourage you to set a seed type goal. It's not going to do you any harm, you know. I would, in fact, you probably find it does you an awful lot of good. Most people's results don't change until they start to focus on a seed type goal. And that's just, I'm telling you that from my experience, from my client's experience, from my colleague's experience, Bob's experience. That's just how it is. Um, if you focus on your current results, which is what you're doing when you're just trying to make ends meet, you're focusing on your current results and you just end up getting more of the same. You've got to have a bigger goal. There's um, a quote that I used to think was really corny. Before I, you know, four or five years ago, you wouldn't have caught me listening to anything like this. You know, I mean, I was an accountant. I was, you know, if I can't see it, I don't believe it. You, you know, nothing like this was on my radar. And that's unfortunately why I wasn't getting the results I wanted to get. I know that now, um, and I had to just open my mind and do what Bob told me. And things only started to change for me when I started working towards a C-type goal and stopped focusing on trying to get out of debt and trying to just pay the bills and just, just, just getting by. And if I can just do this and if I can just do that, that will keep you stuck. It will keep you stuck and you have to start thinking about what what do I really want? What is my end goal? And what is it that I want things to look like? You know, I don't know how I'm going to get there. I know I don't know how I'm going to get there. But what do I want it to look like? You know, and the how, the how will come. The how does come. Um, and I, I understand where you are. But... I also know from experience that things ain't going to change if you just focus on just getting by. You've got to raise your sights. The quote, just gone off on a tangent, the quote that I was talking about was, you know, if you shoot for the stars, you might just hit the moon. And you think, what a ridiculous quote that is, but it's absolutely true. You know, if you're just shooting at the next month's bills and the next month's bills and the next month's bills, you might not even hit that. So you've got to push your goal out. You've got to aim higher to at least be able to get to where you where you initially want to be. So I hope I hope that makes sense. <laughs> makes sense to me. Lynn, thanks Emma. I keep coming back to the same goals, but I agree. I don't think I've refined them enough yet. In terms of my financial goal, I've already made progress, particularly in my thinking. Yeah, and and the financial goal has got to be specific. You know, it's no good just saying, I want to have lots of money. You need to know how much money and why you want that money. You know, what would you do with that money? I, I, I sometimes get people who say, oh yeah, I want to make a million dollars next year. And I'll say to them, okay, what what's the million dollars for? And they'll kind of, well, because I see other people have earning a million dollars and I think it'd be great. Yeah, okay, but, but what do you want? What do you want that money for? What would you spend on it? What would you do with it? And actually, when you work out what they really want, when you actually get them to visualise and think about the house they want, the car they want, um, the lifestyle they want, the number of vacations they want to be going on, the kind of weekends away they want and all the rest of it, they actually need a lot less than a million dollars. It's just that that just sounds like a nice figure. So you, you've got to get clear on what you want and why you want it. And that's what today's aim is. So, as I say, I, I totally understand that having a C-type goal for some of you might just seem like a total waste of time because you can't even pay the bills. I, I understand that. And I've been there myself, okay? But trust the process, right? Allow yourself, allow your imagination just for today or just for these five days. Just play with me, okay? Just allow your imagination to wander and allow you, yourself to think about what would I, what do I really, really want? Because regardless of where you are now, 
regardless of what kind of state financially you're in, emotionally you're in, physically you're in, regardless of what's happening right now, if you don't decide you want to change it and you make a decision about what you want it to be like, it's never going to happen. It just isn't. So you need to make the decision about what you want, not what you think you can have, about what you want. Let's see if I don't want to miss any comments. I don't know if I can refresh this without it. Let's have a look on my phone. Thank you for that advice. It's what I need a little push. I'll be with you all week. Good. I'll be here. I'll be here all week, damn. <laughs> yeah, I will be here. And make sure you, you know, ask questions. Ask for clarity if you need clarity. We all need a push. Um, the thing about goals big goals. The thing about, you know, everybody's got this dream life that they want. Okay. Everybody has, whether they admit it or not. Uh, a lot of people will say they have, Oh, I'm just happy. I'm just happy with what I've got. But, but most people aren't. Um, they just don't want to say, or they feel embarrassed or quite often they don't actually know what they want. They just know they don't want what they've got. That's another big problem, you know? Um, which is why this is kind of new to a lot of people. I know when I first did this, um, you know, I've got two young girls, I've got two grown up stepsons. I've basically had kids around me since I was 21. Um, I've never thought about what I really wanted. Everything that I worked towards was all kind of for other people or as a group, you know, as a family. Um, I never actually took the time to sit and ask myself what I wanted and I found it really, really hard. It took me weeks to decide what it was that I actually wanted and why I wanted it and what it would mean to me and what it would mean to my family if I actually achieved this. Um, but the, the, the problem is that dream life never, it's never urgent. It's never urgent. Well, it's not going to be urgent, is it? It's, it's just for a lot of people it's just a nice to have it's a oh oh wouldn't it be nice if we had that one day wouldn't it be nice if we could do this whenever we wanted that's what most people have as a dream life if you actually want to achieve it you've got to change it from being that into i am going to do everything that i can to try to achieve that and if you do that even if you only get half the way there won't that be a damn sight better than where you are now? But there's never that urgency. You've got to create that urgency yourself. And that urgency, as Lynn was saying, Lynn was saying she, she finds it a little bit difficult to get emotionally involved with her goals. The urgency comes from that emotion, you know, especially if it's to do with family or um, health, you know, th that emotion, that burning desire that I'm trying to build within you, and I'm hoping that by the end of the week, I will, that is what's gonna create the urgency for you. That's what's going to make you think, I have got to, if I don't do this now, now I know it's my responsibility, and now I know I have control over my future, if I don't do this, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, feel like I haven't achieved what I'm supposed to achieve in life. You've got to create the urgency. I know what life I want. I can be detailed, but how detailed do I need to be? Um, well, Steve, it's up to you. Um, but we actually, with my clients, we actually create what we call a power life script, which is writing out in full, um, exactly 
really detailed versions of how you want your life to look like from the minute you wake up on the morning to the minute you go to bed at night so that you know we go into that much detail i haven't done today because it's just a five day challenge and like we haven't got enough time i know that by wednesday i'll already get i'll already be getting people saying ah stop i'm overwhelmed I'm, i can't do all this i don't have enough time in the day so in the free five day challenge you are not gonna i'm not gonna ask you to do that but you know with with my clients definitely we do it really detailed you know people can tell you um the hours they're going to be working who they're going to be working with uh, what kind of house they're going to live in what the curtains are like in the bedroom you know we go into a lot a lot of detail and the more detailed you can be the better but for the purposes of the challenge um it's more important that you get that overview and you get that vision of what you want your life the whole of your life to look like you know i'm not just talking about the job you want to be in or the business you want to have or the relationship you want to have i'm talking about the whole thing you know which is why if you when you listen to the visualization um you'll you'll get what i mean because it kind of guides you to think about different elements of that of that ideal life pardon me but ideal life Right, I'm going to just give everybody a last chance to ask any questions if they want to. Uh, I think there's a little bit of a delay on the comments. I still don't know why my skin looks like that on here. <laughs> I look like I'm all blotchy. Uh, let's just see. Just see if I'm missing anything from anyone. Don't think there's any more comments. Oh, Steve, I have that vision. My version two. Am I able to be more? Am I able to be more detailed in the upgraded version? I have that vision. My version two. Am I able to be more detailed in the upgraded version? not sure what that question is steve basically if you do the tasks that i've given you today that you know it's a, it's a quick start challenge so that should you know even if you've done this before i want you to be really clear and write down what you see when you've done the visualization write down what you see i know you haven't done it yet so maybe maybe ask me tomorrow once you've done Maybe once you've done the, the tasks from today, maybe come back tomorrow and ask again. I think that's probably the best thing to do. Can I have more than one C-type goal? No, Lynn. <laughs> that's just greedy. Your C-type goal has got to be the life that you want. Okay? There will be lots of different elements within that. So if you've done the tasks from today... I don't know, I think I saw your task one. If you, if you do the bonus task, um, it should become a bit more apparent. There'll be lots of elements that go to make up that C-type goal. So there'll be, I don't know, there might be a house, there might be a particular business, there might be a relationship, there might be a car, there might be holidays. It, your C-type goal is the way you want your whole life to look, okay? And that will be made up of lots of other little goals, but it's we want you to get clear on how you want to be living, where you want to be going on holiday, who you want to be going with, how you want to be spending your weekends, what kind of car you want to be riding, what, where you want to be eating out, where you want to, uh, where you want your kids to be schooled, or you know the, the whole the whole thing is what your C type goal is, and that never changes. Okay, that C-type goal, that has got to be your fantasy life, your dream life. I don't like using those words because it makes people think that they're not possible, that they're just a fantasy, um, but they become possible once you start to work on them. 
Um, so no, you, your C type goal is the the life that you want to live and how you see that panning out, and that is what you need to focus on. Upgraded version you offered for twenty nine. Oh, you're talking about the oh right. Uh, no, we don't do. We don't do a more detailed version of the C-type goal in that £29 thing that you're talking about. Um, we, do a, we do it a lot in the mentorship, in the six-month mentorship. Um, we go into all sorts of detail and, and we spend a long time on it, um, but not in that particular upgrade, Steve. No, it's not something that we do in there. There's nothing stopping you creating your own detailed, you know, life script. You literally sit down, um, sit down, ask yourself, what would I be doing from the minute I woke up in the morning to the minute I go to sleep at night? What literally, hour by hour, what would my day look like? You could, there's nothing stopping you doing that by yourself and then reading it every day, every morning, every night time. It's definitely something that you can do yourself at. Lynn's got it. God. Yeah, and the, the thing is, Lynn, you know, the, the goal never changes. The plan to get there might. Okay, so the, when you see that life that you want, that the whole of life vision that you have that you want to be living, you might not know, well, you probably won't know how you're going to get there now. I didn't when I first started, but I bloody well do now. And I've got a detailed, organised plan and I know that it's going to work. But that's taken probably 18 months. You know, it's not a, it's not a quick thing. It's, it's not. And all the beliefs and the self-image that you have and the habits that you've built up and the way you think... That has developed over decades and decades and decades and we've got to change that to be able to get you to do the things, have the thoughts, have the ideas, take the actions that you need to to achieve this goal. So this is why you've got to be in it for the, for the long haul, you know, and most people aren't. Most people set off thinking maybe they will be and then they give up. Um, but you can't do that because it might take, you know, I don't know what everybody's C-type goal is, but some people might have a C-type goal that's going to take them five years. Some people might have a C-type goal that's going to take them 12 months. It all depends on what your goal is, what you've done before, what kind of belief, what kind of self-belief you've got, what kind of self-confidence you've got. Depends on all kinds of things that are sitting in that subconscious mind of yours. Um, and some people can change it really quickly. Usually it takes at least months you know and, and for lots of us it takes longer than that but you've got to be prepared to stick with it and to do what you need to do to achieve it and repetition plays a very very big part in that especially when it comes to reprogramming how you think so we can start this week by repeatedly thinking about that vision thinking about that goal and imagining how you will feel when you've achieved it really trying to get emotionally involved with it and, and doing it when as many times as you can a day thinking about it visualizing it feeling it as many times as you can a day the repetition is so important because it's repetition that changes your subconscious mind it's, it's that that changes your programming you've got to keep exposing your mind to these ideas over and over and over again before it will accept them and like i say we'll, we'll talk more about that tomorrow Can I do with twenty nine dollar upgrade when I get some more cash flow? Uh, yes, Dan. Just message me when you want to do that. Okay. Well, we're coming up to the hour, I think. So tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to be covering the knowing doing gap. Okay. Um. That is the difference between what people know they need to do 
or what people know they probably should be doing to move themselves forward and what they're actually doing. So once you've got clear on your C-type goal, and you might still be working on your C-type goal for the rest of the week, but once you get clear on that, there's a big proportion of what you need to do to achieve that that you actually already know. You know, most people already have the knowledge and experience and information in their heads that they need to be able to move themselves towards that goal. They're just not doing it. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow. I'm also going to talk uh, talk more about your paradigm and about why we need to reprogram it, why we need to reprogram your subconscious mind and how to do it. Um, so that's tomorrow. Uh, what's Steve saying? Okay, I've done the script. I know it's journaling, but I will retype it like a script. Can you repeat the name of the six month course you spoke about? The six month course is thinking into results, Steve. Uh, it's the mentorship program that I deliver with Bob Proctor. So um, I'll talk more about it later in the week, but it's basically I, you know, I, um, along with Bob, we mentor people to achieve the C-type goal and it's a six month program normally, but this week I'm offering a 12 month program. So I'll, I'll tell you more about it later in the week. I don't want to, I don't want it to turn into a selling fest. So, um, let's stick with the tasks for, you know, for the five days. I'll talk to you about thinking into results later in the week. It is a phenomenal program. It's not for everybody, um, because it's a mentorship. So it's working with me. It's not a, it's not a, like a self study where you just go online and just work your way through it. So it's not, not for everybody, but I will, tell you more about it later in the week. Okay. Right. I'm going to leave it there for now then. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you all, you lovely people who joined me, people who are watching the recording. If you've got any questions, please post them in the group, the Facebook group, hashtag question, because I'll be searching for that tomorrow. I'll be looking to see if anybody's put any hashtag questions in the group. If you've had any aha moments, if you've had any wins, if you're celebrating anything at all, please put it in the group so we can celebrate with you. Um, use hashtag win so that we can find those as well. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Steve's putting this thought. What a big hat. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what, Dan? I absolutely love this week. <laughs> I love my challenge week. Um, couldn't take it off me. Great. Okie doke. Right, I will speak to you all tomorrow. Have a lovely evening wherever you are. I know it's not evening for most of you yet. It is here. Um, I'm going to go get my dinner. <laughs> all right, so I'll speak to you all tomorrow and say goodnight. Bye for now.